Well, hello, and welcome back to Middle Age Moto. I uh, am actually out on a ride on a Friday morning. I took a personal day today and uh, wanted to get out and ride my bike. Uh, we're questionable weather coming this weekend, so I definitely wanted to get some time and get out on the bike. I'm loving it so far. Um, I have ridden, ridden it several times. I'm working to get my 600 miles out of the way so I can uh, you know, get my first service done, get everything checked out, and then uh, crank it. Uh, I'm usually from a school of thought that, you know, in the past I rode them like, uh, I broke them in like I was going to ride them, so uh, there really was no break in for me. Um, with my monster I followed pretty much to the T. With this, uh, I'm following it, but not to the T. <laughs> Uh, you're not really supposed to go above 6,000 RPMs, and uh, I have cranked it up to uh, 8 or 9 a couple times. But, uh, with that said, I'm going to jump in here. I do have some new subscribers, so welcome, and uh, I hope you found something that you can enjoy. Uh, this I am not in any way a professional uh, YouTube person or knowledge on motorcycles. I'm just a regular guy that really, really enjoys motorcycles and have dedicated this channel mostly to that. Uh, my previous bike, as you probably saw through the videos, was a Monster, 2018 Monster 1200S. I absolutely love the bike. And uh, my dimensions, just because, eh, eh, basically everything that I talk about is gonna be my, formed as my opinion. And uh, I'm gonna be doing several videos comparing the two bikes. Uh, the things I love, the things I hate about this type of thing. Uh, so far, there's really not a whole lot that I hate. <laughs> that video will be tough. Um, I am 5'9 and a half, 5'10. Uh, I am about 245 to 250, depending on the week, uh, in weights. So I am a chubby guy. And I am middle aged. I am uh, 52 years old. So. Uh, everything I say about ergonomics and you know the feeling between the two bikes is based on on my personal beliefs, uh, based on my my structure. So take some of the stuff with a grain of salt. If you are in great shape, or you're taller, or you're shorter, or you're heavier, uh, because I'm going to basically just talk about my experience at my physical condition. So. Today I wanted to get started. Uh, I was kind of debating whether I was going to do a walk around video to try to give you guys a look at the bike, a better look. But I think a lot of you have seen the bike or can look the bike up online. Uh, this is the non-S version. Uh, I will do a video on why I picked this over, maybe a little bit more in depth. Why I picked this over the S. I've always gotten the top of the line bike uh, that I could because it was always a couple thousand dollars more and I looked at, you know, resale and stuff like that. In this kid's case, I made a decision based on several different things and we'll talk about that. Uh, I want to get out of the way in this video too. Uh, I absolutely love and loved ownership of my Monster 1200S. It was my first Ducati. It was a 2018, like I said, that I bought in 2019. I got a phenomenal deal on it because it was a leftover. And I kept the bike for just over two years. And I will talk about my total ownership experience, and tires and all that kind of stuff maybe in a video too. I should have maybe done an exit video with that bike, but that bike is phenomenal. And, uh, I put about 8,000 miles on it in two years, so not a ton, but yet uh, some decent riding. So to start off, I decided that I'm gonna start comparing the two bikes. And this may run into some other videos as I think of stuff, but I've only ridden this bike for about 200, well actually, uh, let's look. I've only ridden, I'm going down the center lane here, 143 miles. 
So as far as I'm concerned, that's really not a, uh, a good judge of really what the bike's all about. But there are some things that really, really stuck out as soon as I got on the bike. So for me, and just remember, preface back to my height and weight and all of that kind of stuff. When I bought my Monster and I rode it for the first 600 miles and I got it opened up, you know, I got uh, a free bill of health and ready to rock and roll and really get out and, and give it some gas. The first time I wound that bike out, it's, uh, it felt really, really, really squirrely. Um, it was sagging a bunch and, and lightening up my front ends. It just, I really, uh, I got to the point where I didn't do any real zero to hundreds or anything for a while because I was like, man, this bike is just not cut out for this. I'm not a major suspension tuner and I'm all self-taught, but I've pretty much tinkered my whole, you know, if my suspension had adjustments, I've always jumped in and done adjustments. Uh, after researching, uh, the monster came with what the factory settings were and they were set for a hundred and sixty-five or up to hundred and seventy pound person and you know I was close to double that you know what I mean so it definitely was not set up and the tire pressure was set up for a single rider which I run with a double rider because I'm heavier and I don't, I get the same amount of tire wear as normal. So um, after researching, I, I decided to set that up to the sports suspension and uh, it was just too, on the Alabama roads, it was just really, really too, too rough. So I found the sweet spot and truly uh, it transformed that bike totally. I had the old suspension on there, the old suspension was phenomenal. A uh, little overkill for me the way I ride, but uh, it was great. Uh, now, getting this bike, uh, the settings outside the box. Now, granted, I've not wound it out 100%. I have gotten on it. I have done a 0 to 100, cranking up to about 9,000 RPM. And the suspension out of the gate, I believe, comes tighter from the factory. It felt great. It didn't feel squirrely. Uh, I didn't feel uncomfortable. It felt super solid. Now, in general, this bike feels a little bit more solid, actually a decent amount more solid or planted than my Monster did. Not bad mouth in the Monster. I don't want to have to keep saying that. I love the Monster. I think the Monster is an absolute beast. Uh, and it's a fantastic bike. And to be honest with you, if this didn't come out, I'd probably still be riding it. I wouldn't have... Uh, I wouldn't have traded out of it but so as far as suspension on this and I went with the non uh, S model so I have show up front and Saks rear suspension and uh, forgetting the, the steering dampener uh, the monster did not have a steering dampener this bike does to be honest with you I you know at this point in my my ownership I don't really I can't tell really any difference for me personally uh, as far as comfort versus the Monster, now being 5'9", five, 5'10", five, with the Monster, the Monster has the ability, there's blocks underneath the seat, four blocks that you can remove, and I think it gives you an inch. I think, I'll put it up here what the measurements are, but I believe it drops the seat height to 31 inches. So I was able to touch flat-footed. And uh, if you can touch flat foot and still be comfortable, that's great. But what that did was the distance between the pegs and the seat. So I felt pretty cramped. You know, my legs were up pretty high. On the Monster, the pegs are almost straight below a normal, you know, they're much further up than this. This bike has pegs that are back further, more of a sport bike style peg. And uh, it's actually, as far as my legs, I don't feel as cramped. Uh, it's definitely, uh, it's, it's more comfortable to me and, and my body structure. But when you drop that seat on the Monster, I believe it kind of cants forward 
forcing you to kind of sit on top of the gas tank. Uh, it, you know, it's it's almost like you feel like you're going downhill. It didn't feel flat. Uh, is it tolerable? Oh, by any, by all means. I mean, I rode the bike for two years and absolutely loved the bike. But it was something that I always thought about. It felt like my, my manhood was always smashed against the gas tank. And the seat was a little bit, a uh, fair amount firmer than the seat on this. Now this seat is, uh, is, is definitely very, very comfortable. Um, the bottom portion of the seat is actually just mounted right to the bike. It doesn't come off. I put the key in the first time to like take the seat off because every single bike I've, you know, every bike that I've owned, when you flip the thing, it's the either the full seat or the driver's seat, you know, that, that comes off. Well, with this bike, the passenger seat comes off. And uh, there's enough room in there where I, I could probably get a granola bar. Uh, and that's about it. <laughs> so I keep my license or my registration and insurance in there. And there's also a strap, a pillion strap, that you can pull out and then put the seat back on so your purse on the back, which I don't know how anyone, unless they're a circus performer, could ever ride on the back of that. So uh, as far as the seat, the ergonomics, super, super comfortable. I am leaning forward more to where, like, when I ride with one hand, I can feel that I'm using my stomach a little bit, so deep below my blower, I do have a, uh, a six-pack underneath there from years ago. I just haven't seen it in 25 years, but I know that it exists. <laughs> just joking. But I can feel the pull in my stomach uh, a little bit, uh, which I'm sure through time it will help because I am leaned over a little bit more. Uh, I don't really feel weight on my wrists, so it's not to that point. Uh, if anyone's had a, a BMW S1000R, single R, feels more like that. Uh, I've ridden one of those and uh, a little bit more like the MT10 uh, as far as the reach. The Monster was definitely, uh, you know, had a, a little bit of a taller stance handlebar wise. Uh, this is kind of a, a miss, but not a miss. <laughs> you know, Ducati's heritage, I talked about that in one of my other videos, you know, why I bought a monster, you know. A lot of it was heritage, you know, the, the L-twin and the vibration and the sound and the popping and the cracking and all that kind of stuff. It just the, the all about rawness of the bike. Uh, the monster vibrated quite a bit, especially if you were not really going hard and you were going up a hill if you were like going up a hill and you kind of bogged it a little bit it would tend to really really give you a nice vibration and this bike is you know although you do feel a little bit a tiny bit in the, in the handlebars and a tiny bit in my feet because that'll be another thing i'll talk about in a minute here tiny thing uh, buzz of my feet I I really it's very very smooth being a uh, V4 engine uh, the, as far as the foot pegs the monster foot pegs were more of a touring style foot peg with uh, rubber on top so I had the metal peg with a rubber top so there was pretty much you know it was the vibration of the whole peg, but I didn't feel like the buzzing. These are the uh, performance pegs, or for lack of a better way, they're, they're metal, they're smaller, so there's less foot purchase area, or perch area, and uh, they're not coated with anything. Uh, at first when I saw it, I was like, wow, that'll probably be something that's going to look corny, but I'm going to have to replace that. And after riding, it's really, it's not a big deal whatsoever. It's, it's fine. Uh, my monster was stock as far as the exhaust is concerned. And I'm kind of cheap when it comes to that. I'll spend all kinds of money on a bike, but when it comes to like aftermarket exhaust nowadays, 
I just can't justify two grand and even like the full exhaust of this. I mean, a titanium or whatever exhaust is like nine grand for this thing. I mean, the Akrapovich or Akrapovich or whatever, you know, however anyone pronounces it, the exhaust for this is, it's like 5,500 bucks and they gotta dismantle the whole back half of the bike to put it on. Uh, I just didn't justify, that's, you know, it's the price of a damn, uh, uh, Honda Dual Sport for crying out loud, you know, CRF 300L that I've been, that I'm going to be buying. I mean, that's pretty much the sticker price without ABS is 5,500 bucks. So I can't justify that. So as far as noise in the beginning, the droning kind of got to be, I want to, you know, just admit that it was kind of annoying because I just wasn't used to it. And uh, I've gotten used to it now in my 146 miles. So and it may have quieted down or start to quiet down when the carbon's up a little bit. I don't know. Uh, I may be talking through my ass on that one. But, uh, you know, it seems to uh, either be less annoying, let's put it that way. And uh, it's sweet. It sounds really, really sweet. And when you do a cold start on this thing, holy moly, the thing is just absolutely uh, phenomenal. The sound, especially in my garage, it's just really, really, really a beautiful song but uh, trying to think of other stuff uh, the only mod that I've done uh, the, the, I'll post a picture of a tailstock that comes standard on it or the, the back ends is hideous you know with the laws uh, it's got to be out farther than the rear wheel I don't know if that's European or United States or what have you but I do know the thing is fuddly looking it's really really ugly and the turn signals are way out at the end it looked hideous so I put an Evo Tech uh, tail tidy on it and uh, cleaned up the whole rear end uh, that is was a, you know the, putting the tail tidy on was our building out the tail tidy because it comes in pieces and you got to kind of assemble it because you got to put your mirrors in there and all that kind of stuff it was really uh, you know the directions are kind of well, it didn't come with directions I looked them up online but uh, it's kind of it's just pictures there's not a word in there <laughs> well, so Sorry about that. Uh, so I put that on, put it together, and it's just getting the wiring all up inside. There's really not a lot of room. I mean, they've packed, they've really streamlined this bike. There's not room for anything. Uh, you look up in there. I was able to to get the wiring in, but you know, it's not optimal in my eyes. I don't know if anything is pinched. I kind of just pushed as much in as I could, shoved it up in there, and then rammed the thing on and. Uh, as long as nothing was sticking out getting pinched I screwed it home uh, so we're just hoping that <laughs> I don't get a chafe or something of that nature uh, on that but uh, next plans the gas tank on this bike actually this front half is uh, battery and electronics so the gas tank is like half halfway up and it actually comes down under the seat because there's no fuel gauge uh, from what I understand uh, you can't uh, they can't get a fuel gauge to work because of the style of the gas tank. So it's um, back to the old school uh, ride with the tripometer. And it's one less thing to go bad. Ducatis are known. My monster had to have it fixed. It went bad after a year. So it's not a big deal. Uh, a fuel light comes on and give you, if you're driving normal, you get about 20 miles. Uh, so. This bike's never going to be, you know, like a touring style bike. I mean, this is just out doing this, so I'm always within, you know, 10 miles of, of a gas station on everywhere that I ride around right now. Uh, it's not really that much. Uh, I haven't really calculated my gas because I, I cleared out my trip. But uh, I think that kind of, you know, sums up for the first video. I don't want to make these too long. Uh, my views... Uh, a lot of the time I think I'm boring the hell out of you because people are jumping off early on. Uh, but, you know, if you want to, you know, if you heard something you like, I hate asking every time, but I'm trying to grow the channel. Uh, I think I'm up to 29 subscribers, which I appreciate immensely. You know, I have a little party of 30, I guess. 
and uh, I'm hoping maybe this will uh, entice more people. Maybe the monster just wasn't something that a lot of people were interested. Uh, the CRF, I think, uh, will definitely bring some people aboard too. Uh, but I just want to grow the channel, just grow the audience. Uh, I've made said in several videos on my, my take on that, so if you go back through some videos, you'll be able to find uh, my take on the whole YouTube thing. I do it for fun, and I do it because I enjoy it. Uh, but with that said, I'm going to uh, I'm going to jump off of here, and then I will uh, get this video up probably today or over the weekend. And then uh, this weekend, I'll be making a few more videos to try to get ahead of things, and maybe post a few extras. I missed some time. So thank you very much and have a wonderful day.